Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the premiere episode of our college baseball tour. Today we go to Duke University and visit with the head coach Chris Pollard to learn a little bit more about the Blue Devils program. We tour the facility and also get an inside look at how recruiting works from a Division I level. You've been in North Carolina in the baseball scene for a really long time now, almost 30 years. Uh, Davidson, Pfeiffer, App State, uh, and, and then Duke as the head coach now. Being in this game for, for a while, was that always your plan, or was there some point in your career where you're like, I guess this, this is the route I'm going down? We've been really fortunate to, to be right here in North Carolina for my, the entirety of my coaching career. I played at Davidson, met my wife at Davidson, uh, and, and to be sort of close to home, uh, Steph grew up in Hickory, I grew up in Central Virginia, you know, it's been a blessing for us to, uh, you don't get to make that many coaching stops very often and stay so close to where you started. You know, as far as getting into coaching, um, like most of us have played this game, uh, we got into coaching because we couldn't play it anymore. You know, I didn't. That, that's definitely me. <laughs> well, I think it's a lot of us, right? I mean, you, you know, you have that passion for the game, you have that passion to compete, and you're no longer a player. And, and if you can't play, the next best thing is coaching. But it, it's it's been an unbelievable opportunity to be around so many great players, to to be around so many other great coaches. And I've been really lucky to be at uh, four great institutions. And everywhere I've ever been, I felt like, you know what, we could stay here for the rest of my career and, and be perfectly happy. And, and so I, I think that we've been lucky. And, and I think some of coaching is, is candidly is luck. That, that it's really important, I think, for any school that they really understand the academic you know, demands and requirements of a school. And, it, and in my experience, I think sometimes people think that that can be flexible. You know, if you're a really good athlete, then maybe the academics sure. can be a little, when it comes to admissions, because you're gonna bring that value to the institute. Can you speak to those requirements sure. here? Well, it's, it's a special place academically, and because it is so special, uh, there are top students from all over the world that want to attend this place. Uh, last year, we had 37,000 applications for about 1,500 spots in our freshman class. Uh, our acceptance rate is hovering right now around 6%, which puts us in competition with Harvard and Princeton and MIT and some of the most selective schools in the world. Um, that being said, our admissions office values athletics, and, and, and they've done a tremendous job of working with us when we find student athletes that are a great fit, guys that are going to be successful here in the classroom, but also can help us continue to move the needle with this program relative to getting to Omaha. You know, the, every academic institution is a little bit different in terms of how athletics works with admissions. And for us, uh, we have a very specific formula. We have, uh, as probably everybody that follows college baseball knows, we have a 35-man roster in Division I baseball. And for us here at Duke, we have 35 admissions spots to be able to, to fill that 35-man roster with guys that are gonna help us compete in the ACC. Now, sometimes folks hear that and they think, well, you get 35 exceptions, you can get anybody you want. Well, no, they've still gotta be, if you're, if you're gonna be a Duke baseball recruit, you've still gotta be a great student. Um, you don't have to get into Duke on your own, uh, but you do have to be a great student. So let me ask you this. For a lot of times, high school kids are thinking, don't take an ACT, don't take an SAT until my junior year, middle of my junior year. And, and for me, I like to encourage guys or, or tell possible recruits, take it earlier. You know, take that, take that test earlier. It's almost can be used as a baseline for a college coach. Just like, hey, if I see a fastball at 80 miles per hour freshman year, I don't necessarily think that's going to be 80 miles per hour in four years. You know, this is all based off projections. Is that true or not 100 percent, Josh. I think that is incredibly valuable advice for student athletes out there that are navigating this process to understand. Even guys that are looking at Duke often are persuaded, whether it's the guidance office at the high school or um, you know, wherever that advice comes from to try to wait. And, 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 and so what you have is this dynamic where a lot of guys will wait and take that first test in the spring of their junior year. Um, you hit it right on the head. 
That first test serves as a baseline. It gives you an idea of what you're doing well and what you might need to work on. So if that first test comes in the spring of the junior year, that doesn't give you nearly as much time to work at those areas where you may be a little bit short. We, we give the same advice that you just gave, which is take it as early as possible. And if you don't move that needle substantially between the first test and the second test, meaning the first time you take that standardized test and the second time you take that same standardized test, well then take the other version. So if you take the SAT, maybe summer before your junior year, and then you take it again in the fall of your junior year and you don't see that needle move as much as you'd like, well then take the ACT and get a baseline on it and see if maybe you don't test better on one or the other when it comes to that standardized test. I've just seen so many examples over the last eight years here at Duke where one of our recruits will perform substantially better on one version yeah. than the other version. So let's get back to the baseball. We're going into 2020, six consecutive 30 plus win seasons, three NCAA appearances in the last four years, a super regional berth each of the past two seasons. What is it now? Because there's only, well, there's maybe two more steps winning it also, but the first step would be getting to Omaha. Getting Omaha. Yeah, how are we gonna get to Omaha? Well, really close. And as much as the last two seasons have, have been a great validation for the, the hard work that our coaching staff has put in, Josh Jordan, who's a 2018 ABCA Baseball America National Assistant Coach of the Year. He's our recruiting coordinator and our associate head coach. He's done an unbelievable job of bringing top talent to our program. And I think the last two years have validated that. Uh, coach Blake, who handles our pitching, and Coach Steen, who handles our hitting, have done an unbelievable job of developing those guys once they get to campus. And, and Chris Gordon, our director of operations, has, has been the, the, the glue to it all and, and has been a, a so good with the analytics side and, and presenting data to us as coaches that we can turn around and utilize to help our guys advance on the field. Uh, that being said, to come up one game short each of the last two years has been hard. It's left a really sour taste, and, and much more so in 19 than in 18. And, and in 18, we were in uncharted territory, you know, and, and, and just to be there was, uh, was a new and exciting development for Duke. Last year, to win that first game at Vanderbilt and feel like, okay, hey, you've done this now, you've been here, you know what to expect, let's take this next step, and to not get it done, um, was tough. Now we lost to a great, great team. Not, not just us. Is there any consolation in that, that they went on to win it all for the, for, for you? Well, I think it was validation of just how uh, tough of an opponent we were up against. I, and I've said this to, to coach Corbin, but I've said this to, to other coaches uh, uh, over this past year, that Vanderbilt team was not just great by 2019 standards. We're going to look back five, 10 years down the road and recognize that last Especially year's great. Vanderbilt team was a historically great team relative to college baseball. Maybe one of the better college baseball teams of all time. So to go up against those guys and go toe to toe in the series the way we did, it validates how close we are. Now our guys have got to stay hungry. You know, we, we can't become complacent. The, the, the challenge is, and I've talked a lot about this a lot with coaches around our league, in the ACC, you can be good and still not win. Mm -hmm. You can be talented and, and, and still struggle to win baseball games just because of the depth of the league. I think as you look ahead to 2020, I think the ACC will be as deep and as talented as it's ever been since I've been in the league. And so uh, we, have to, we have to survive the ACC before we start worrying too much about the postseason. And, and we'll focus on the, the task at hand, which is getting better over this preseason and staying healthy. and using the, the non-conference slate before we open up with Florida State at home, you know, to get That's our guys ready. Lot. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. I'm not going to tell you who I'm rooting for in <laughs> So I understand. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs>how many national championships these guys got? Five? Oh, there they are. Jeez. We'll have to come back here, get dressed up, hang out with the Cameron Crazies next time.
We're here in the Scott Family Sports Performance Center where Duke Baseball trains strength and conditioning. Really fortunate to have a dedicated sports performance coach, Dan Perlmutter, who's absolutely the best in the country. We've got one of the very best facilities in the country for our guys to train. Individual racks, speed training area with an indoor track, Gatorade Nutrition Center, truly one of the nicest of its kind anywhere you'll find in all of college athletics. Here in the Scott Performance Center training room, our guys are able to get any type of treatment, any, any access to anything from Mark Pro to um, Normatec to any type of uh, modalities for recovery from not only performance, but also uh, recovery if they have to recover from a surgery. And again, we have full-time physical therapists here in Scott to help our guys get back out on the field quickly. You'll see over my shoulder, we've got uh, hydrotherapy as well. So our guys are able to take advantage of that. Yeah, we're standing out here in front of the Mike Krzyzewski Center for Academic Excellence. We call it the Case Center. It's where all the academic support happens for our student athletes. Each one of our sports, including our baseball program, has their academic advisor that works with them on planning out their schedule. Our athletes have priority registration. We have a study hall center and a tutoring center inside this building. Tutoring is free of charge for all of our athletes. Here at Coombs Field, which is the practice facility for the Duke University baseball program, you'll notice it is an all-turf facility with a video board and a 6,000 square foot indoor hitting facility. We're in the Durham Bulls Athletic Park, uh, the, yeah. the home of Duke Baseball. We're sitting here in the first base dugout, kind of about where I'd sit if a ball game was going on right now. About I this far down the bench? Yeah, well, sometimes. Are you superstitious? You move around? Uh, our players think I'm superstitious. I just think I have a good process. <laughs> okay, that works. That works. So this is where you guys play your home games. This is also where the ACC hosts their tournament each year. Have for a long time. You know, it'll bounce around a little bit more nowadays, uh, but the ACC tournament's been here in the DVAP a number of years over this last decade, and it's a beautiful ballpark. Uh, uh, it's a it's a luxury and a, and and a tr tremendous asset to be able to play our games here, and it's been a fun experience for our guys. So I hear a lot out there, coaches always using the term fit. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for the right fit. Um, you know, as a, as a player or, or as a high school coach, it's tough to tell what's the right fit for a school because every school's so different, right? Um, and a lot of times that has to do with intangibles. It doesn't have to do with baseball. That's right. We, we know what the numbers and the metrics look like yeah. for this guy versus this guy. So what is the right fit for Duke baseball? It's a great question, and I think it's one of the most important questions that a recruit has to ask himself with regards to, is this place the right fit for me? And I think it's one of the most important questions that as a staff, we have to ask ourselves when we're looking to make an offer, uh, present an opportunity to a player. You know, for us here at Duke, obviously academics is a big part of the fit. That's got to be paramount in the recruiting process. We've got to know for sure that that player fits our profile academically. You hit it right on the head, Josh. You know, the ability to throw, you know, X velocity or run X60 or, you know, those metrics, I think those are pretty standard uh, uh, across the board when it comes to, 
major college baseball at the ACC level. For us, intangibly, if I were going to boil it down to a very specific, simple phrase, we want guys that are capable of being the same guy every day. Consistency of approach is huge when it comes to predictability of success at the college level. And so, but how do you find that, right? Because you're looking for a guy who can be consistent every day. Yeah, there's no way you could possibly see this guy every day right. through his high school years. So, so how can you find that? Well, I think it's, it it's puts the onus back on us from a staff standpoint to do our homework. That means talking with coaches. That means talking with uh, the travel ball organization. We want to get a feel for reliability. We want to get a feel for loyalty. We want to get a sense of how does this player handle adversity. You know, we all know that uh, we're all wired to, 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 to be positive and bring good energy and be a great teammate and, and, and have a great work ethic when things are going well. In our sport, you have to be able to do all those things when situation's not going well for you. And, uh, and that goes back to the, those players that I've experienced over the years, the great ones have been the guys that have been able to keep that approach consistent irregardless of how things are going for them personally. And, and there's no great answer for how you find that in the recruiting process. It really boils down to as best you can, doing your homework and really taking the time to get to know the player in person. And I think that's why the ability to sit down one-on-one, -on -one, whether that's a conversation in a recruiting visit or whether that's the ability to interact with a coach in a camp setting, but the ability to look a guy in the eyes and have a conversation with him and, and, and also a conversation with his family to get a sense of, okay, is this guy truly a good fit for what we'd like to do? So, so we have an idea now what a good fit for Duke baseball is. Um, there's so much going on out there between travel teams and high school baseball and showcase and camp and this and that and the other. How for you do you filter through that? What do you find is, you know, you have the most success doing this or doing that in, in finding that right fit? It's a great question. It's tough to answer. It's more art than science. Um, but I will say this, we've had great success and it sounds like a self-serving answer, Josh. It's not meant to be. We've had great success with guys attending our camps and getting a chance to see them on our field, having them have a chance to get exposed to our university. And you get to see them in a competitive environment. You get to see them interact with uh, other players around them. They get a chance to spend time with us as coaches. That's certainly one venue for us that's been important. I love when the opportunity presents itself to be able to see guys in their high school season. Uh, I think that is it gives a great insight into a guy when he's playing for his high school and, and, and interacting with his high school teammates. It's not always possible though, right? I mean, it, it, you know, it, the challenge is the high school baseball season's going on the same time as the college baseball season. If you're winning and playing well, you're not gonna be able to get to a lot of those games. And then certainly getting out and, and being visible and, 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 and hitting the roads hard in the summertime and fall and seeing guys in a competitive setting would always prefer to see a player in a competitive setting over a showcase setting. I think it's much more revealing. We get a chance to, to watch this guy have to handle a little bit of failure, to see how he does when things aren't going his way. I think that's a more revealing setting than just watching a guy run a 60 or, or throw from the outfield or, or throw in a showcase bullpen setting. Well, camp. Can you kind of talk to why is camp so important? No, it's a really good question. I, I would say first, because in today's world with the NCAA limitations on unofficial visits and the inability to take an unofficial visit until September 1 of your junior year, it is the only way that a player and his family can get on campus and interact with a coaching staff in a setting that's NCAA compliant. And now the NCAA has relaxed the rules such that players, when they're on campus for a camp, have the ability to take an, a, a tour of campus, see the facilities, see the other aspects of the campus, and, and get a better feel for that, not only that program and how their coaches coach, but also get a feel for the university itself. So I think that part of it is incredibly important. You know, and I think the difficult thing for players now is, okay, well, I get so many invitations how do I figure out what the right camp is for me? Right, that was going to be my question because a lot of times kids are interested, but they get this standard email and they say, well, you know, 
do I even have a shot there? Do they even need a kid like me? Am I even good enough? And, and so how do they know I should go to Duke's camp? I really have a shot there. I think it's a great question. I think number one uh, is, does the profile of the university and the program fit for me academically? You know, I, I, I am pretty direct with players when they email me, uh, if they are not projecting a fit for us academically, we want to be honest with them about that. You, uh, their time is valuable. Uh, the investment of money that goes into to getting to a camp. Uh, we want to make sure that they're as targeted as they can be. And candidly, as coaches, you know, it, it's in our best interest that our camps are full of guys that uh, have the right academic profile for what we're looking for. So when a player asks me directly, hey, coach, what do you think? You know, as best we can with uh, staying NCAA compliant, we want to be honest about what we're looking for, particularly when it comes to academics, to make sure, hey, this makes sense for us as a family. Um, the other, I think, important thing, Josh, is take a look at who are the other coaches that are going to be working that camp in addition to that staff. You know, and hopefully it's a, it's a program that when they run camps, you know, they employ a lot of different college coaches from a lot of different levels. Right, and that's good. That's, that's probably one of the reasons that you're having success here is because you give that direct answer to the player. They can email the head coach of a prestigious program and get an answer from the coach, which, you know, a lot of guys do, but it's not as often as maybe as it, sh as it should be. And, and that interaction probably is, is a big reason for the success. I commend you on that, Coach, and I really appreciate you allowing Thanks me to come out and, yeah, and talk about so many up. things and spending the time. So yeah. good luck this year, and uh, we'll be looking for you in Omaha.